eternal Father. For the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. A lot could be said about all the readings today. In fact, each of them can never be exhausted if we take them as a separate stuff. So let's try to see the much we can gather from all of them. Now, the first of Jesus' miracle is John chapter 2. It was done at Cana in Galilee. Jesus changed the water into wine. I have told you before, let me re remind you again. Bible is not novel. Bible is a book. In fact, a book of theology. It takes certain skills and the power of the Holy Spirit to interpret. Not everybody has the business of interpreting the Bible. So when you read a story in the Bible, the first thing that will come to your mind is what was in the writer's mind, the author's intention of writing it. You cannot interpret this story literally. If you do, you will kill it, and you will destroy the author's intention. I know this is kind of a Bible passage that many preachers would like to fly to heaven with and come down. But please calm down. If you even interrogate the story, you understand what I'm talking about. Just look at it. So this wedding has gone on. People have taken uh, as much wine as possible. Um, then the wine finished. In fact, some people are even saying that, because if you read very well, it said the mother of Jesus was there, right? And Jesus also was invited. I don't want to delve too much. Mary wasn't invited, but Jesus was invited. Why? From further analysis, it's like Mary knew the couples personally, so to say, but let's leave that. But the thing that Jesus was invited, and Jesus went with some of his disciples, so probably it's their presence that even finished the wine. Maybe Judas and Peter drank more than they should. Because when they invited Jesus, they invited only him. But he moves with his what? Disciples. Okay? Okay. Focus now. I want to, I want to give you the deeper meaning of the, of, the, of, the, of the miracle before we now go to other applications. So, the wine finished. So, it's not like people have, it's not like nobody in the wedding has not got wine. Everybody has taken, you remember? Because the stewards say, why is it that it's now that we have taken the worst wine or the bad one that you are bringing the best? That normally people will serve the best, then now serve the, the nonsense one for the wasting of time and all of that. But you are doing the reverse. Okay? Okay. So, the wine finished, and Mary approached Jesus. And after all is said and done, she said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, he said there were six stone jars standing there. Six stone jars. It's like, um, like a drum. And each of these stone jars could carry 20 or 30 gallons. If you calculate them by today's standard, each of those um, jars could, he could hold almost 100 liters of water. 100 liters each. So if there are six, 100 times six, that's how many? 600 liters of water. You know 50 liters now? That giant jerry can we use. Uh -huh. So two means it will take you to fill one of those stone jars. And in this wedding, they are probably not even up to 100. 
they should be less than that number. Because those days, they didn't have the means we have of gathering people as we do. Praise God. Uh, so imagine, if these people have been drinking before, and now Jesus came and supplied another, how many liters? 600 liters of wine to people who were already filled with wine. If you calculate it by bottle, it means that one person from the Jesus' own wine, one person is entitled to eight bottles. <laughs> the bottle, they are very happy now. <laughs> Some people are saying, God, why was I not there? <laughs> Praise God. That means one person was entitled to eight bottles. So tell me, why would Jesus give excess wine? When I talk about wine, I mean wine. I've told you before, there's a difference between wine and juice. Every wine is alcoholic. What Jesus gave them was alcohol. If you, once you call wine, it's alcoholic. Anything that does not have alcohol in it cannot be wine. You can call it juice. So all that nonsense we say in Nigeria, non-alcoholic wine, is nonsense. It's either wine or it is not wine. What you have are juice. Ever, ever this thing is in juice, go and read it. You can never see them. Anybody who writes non-alcoholic wine, the person is simply being ignorant. So it's either juice or wine. Some juice are bottled. Chamdo is a juice. Pure heaven is juice. Ever is juice. Every other one is what? Wine. So what Jesus gave them was wine. So the question is, why would he make wine? Super abundantly available for people who are already had taken wine. Does it make sense? Are you saying that Jesus is, is he encouraging people to be drunk? Eh? So it's when you look at all of these things, then you begin to ask yourself, what was the intention of the writer? Because the writers of the gospel will use normal languages, normal events to tell you something deeper. The essence of this is not the provision of wine, so to say. It is to let you know that Jesus, when he is present, joy overflows. Because the Bible connects wine with what? Joy. That the presence of Jesus in your life, in my life, brings joy to the world, to the overflowing Wine cannot give you joy. Some things say, at the pre the, uh, in the presence of the Lord, there is what? Fullness of joy. That Jesus is the one that has come to bring what is lacking in our lives. If you take it literally, it will be that Jesus is the one who gives wine in a wedding. That's not what it is. That is the deeper this thing. Um, if you look at it like that. So, that's what John, John has in mind. That's why the Bible could say this was his first sign. He did it in Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples did what? They believed in him. I need you to take that into this. Every miracle written in John has a discourse following after, going forward. Meaning that there is something more and all of that. So I am not here to debate with those who say... Who use this? There are some people who use this passage to justify uh, alcohol. You don't need justification for alcohol. Alcohol is not a sin. What the Bible condemns is drunkenness. Don't also use this sin to encourage yourself to be drinking. That's not the essence. Uh, for those of you who are on the opposing and proposing side, that's not what God is concerned about here. If you like, take the message if you like. Be looking for nonsense and all of that. Now, two things. I want us to take from this analysis before we now go into application. Two things. Number one. Number one. Jesus, he says, was invited to the marriage with his disciples and he went. Everybody say he went. He went. Say he went. he went. Where did this marriage take place? In the church? Eh? Where did it take place? In their home. Those days, there were no event centers. Most celebrations took place in the homes. And it's a traditional Jewish thing. So, Jesus 
was not the kind of religious leader that was strict, antisocial, and always carrying tight face and spreading sadness and seriousness everywhere he went. That is the image of God that some people paint for you. He went for marriage, marriage ceremony, marriage reception, party, marriage party. Let me put it that way. He went for what? Marriage party. And even when wine finished, instead of him to bring Bible and begin to read to them the commandments of God, he went and changed water into wine. In the name of Christianity, many of you have become antisocial. You don't go for social events. Some of you have rejected your tribal and cultural practices. I think you are being Christian or holy. Some of you said before you go, you will want to bend the rules. When wine finished, he did not give them holy water. He gave them wine. You are an Igbo girl, you are going for your traditional marriage. And the Igbo culture is you will carry what to look for your husband? What? Palm wine. But your seer. Your prophet has told you that if you do that, your destiny is finished. You now go and start negotiating with elders so that you will carry juice or water. If I'm an elder eh, in any village and somebody proposes that nonsense to me, bah, that family will not marry again. Pure nonsense. People will stay and see useless things. I'm coming to that. They use palm wine to do traditional marriage rites in Igbo, land, uh, in Igbo culture. Other cultures have their own. Don't carry your, your, your illusory spirituality, your stupid religiosity, and go and be negotiating. Carry the wine. Carry the wine. If carrying wine for your traditional marriage you were to end your destiny, you, you for no even rich here, something your ancestors did hundreds of years. You know, I've told people sometimes, Christians sometimes, as if you, as if you they lock your brain, collect the key, and begin to remote you like zombies. Jesus did every cultural thing that his people did. He did all of them. So don't be afraid. Don't let anybody confuse you. Any traditional right, cultural right, as long as there is no fetish, devilish, demonic thing involved in it, do it. Breaking of Kola not in our tradition is an elder. Abi, even if it is during Bazaar and Father is there, I am not an elder. Give the Kola not to those who are elder. Let them break in the traditional way. Some of us want to, hey, let's give to Father to pray. Some Christians, if Father does not pray, they will not eat that Kola not to. No, 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 no. People should stop from now henceforth. If anybody gives me Kola not to please, because I didn't remember this, and that's why I would pray. If we have Bazaar, give the Kola not to the elder. Do what you should do. You invoke the spirit of your good ancestors. Abi, one revelation says people from every tribe, tongue, and nation gathered. What do you think he's talking about? When the church says all saints in November 1st, what the church is telling you is that there are saints we have not canonized that you don't know, and they can come from anywhere. When we uh, invoke saints in the culture, what are we doing? Is it not the spirit of our departed religious ancestors? Uh-huh. What do elders use the colonel for? Is it not prayer? Anyone who has brought colonel has brought life. Those of us who we eat, may we eat good health. And you will say what? He say, say he say. He say means amen. Uh-huh. Let those who are marrying today, may God bless you with good health of man and body. He say, may your children grow. May you not bury your children. He say, may our ancestors. When it means ancestors, you mean the good people of your lineage who are in heaven. People want to be more Christian than Jesus, more Catholic than the Pope. Many of you are scared of these things because of wrong Christianity. When the elder finishes, we will say what? He say, eat the color not. Nothing will happen. Masquerade. If masquerade means wearing mask and dressing in costume and trying to scare people, sometimes they can even tell stories that are not true. Just to put fear. Uh-huh. When they say women, there are some masquerades you know. If you see a masquerade, you will not conceive or do this thing. Some of those things are stories that we have to put fear. So that when you see masquerade coming, what will you do? To fear. And dancing. If that is all that is masquerade, it is traditional, it's cultural. Do it. Uh-huh. Go 
go and do masquerade. It's a traditional, um, in fact, it's a traditional cultural tourism. The only one you should know is if it involves incantation, fetish rituals, things that are manifestly against the will of God. I'm talking about masquerade. I'm not talking about juju. I'm not talking about juju. So don't be that kind of Christian who is anti-social, anti-culture, anti-happiness. Some of them are even anti-happy. Jesus likes to associate where there is celebration. Some Christians are and anything that gives people happiness. Let's go for comedy show. Ah, light does not work with darkness. Let's go for this thing. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, somebody is doing birthday party. Can we go? Ah, thank God it's Friday. Can we even go for one party? No, night vigil. Every Friday, night vigil. When will you go for thank God it's Friday? Nothing. And you think you are being Christian. This is Jesus participating in people's culture. It will not be the first time. When he went to Jerusalem for pilgrimage, it's a Jewish thing. Once you are 12, you go. Give me Luke chapter 2. From verse 22 to 24. There is the one you people do. You people don't know it's Jewish culture. That you have and sometimes you're not even following it well. This one you call dedication. This dedication you do in church. It's not Christian doctrine, you know. Praise God. But I don't know. What is Christian is baptism, it's not dedication. Dedication is not a Christian doctrine. It is a personal piety. If you like, you do it. It is copied from the Jews. And you people are not even doing it well. But this thing I'm saying now can cost me some goats and chicken fur. It's okay. God did. The Lord shall provide. Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. Jesus followed the tradition of his people. Then the ones that were not good, he stood against them. He broke traditions, he followed tradition. Not the tradition to break, not the one to follow. Luke chapter 2, verse 22, read with me, say, And when the day came for them to be purified in keeping with the law of who? Of who? Of who? They took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Continue. Observing what is written in the law, of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord. Who must be consecrated? Yes. Who? Yes. But when they do second, third, women, even girls are not supposed to be brought to the temple. Yes, it's only male in the Jewish descent. According to the law, it's only male. Women are not the good Who will be? Who you be? Who you? Who you? Your gay children, they are not dedicated. And only a firstborn in the family is dedicated. Every other children, they are not dedicated. Oh, no, 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 all this, why? Chai. Fowl and chicken will be very scarce in Father's house these days. And also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is prescribed in the law of the Lord, a pair of what? Turtle doves or two young pigeons. It's a Jewish thing. The Christian one is baptism. I'm not saying you should stop it. I'm saying don't be anti-social, anti-cultural in the name of a uh, Stop listening to people who know nothing about Christianity. That's the point. Village meeting, you will not go. They will make you see village meeting like the gathering of devils. If there are devils, what is your work? Bible says you are the lights of the world. When are you even going to light where there is darkness? Why is it that you want to shine only where lights are? If village meeting is populated by devils, all you only want to do is church meeting, then where are you going to shine your light? Go there and dispel the darkness. Go there and dispel the darkness. Praise God. And this will not be the only time you see Jesus. The big man will invite him for a party. He will go and he will use that opportunity to do what? To teach them certain things. Many of you have lost socialization opportunities in the name of Christians and the name of being religious. It's not nice. It's not nice. Please stop playing with our cultures. It's God that gave us um, 
um, our traditions and our cultures. Christianity does not extinguish culture or tradition. What Christianity does is to evangelize it, and those that are ungodly totally, it will do what? Eliminate. But we come and then um, copy what is other people's culture, thinking that it is said. So Jesus, let me tell somebody, Jesus was at a party. He was at a party. Tell somebody, say, Jesus was at a party. He was at a And he drank. Uh, I beg, if your head is not strong for drinking, don't drink. And those of you who cannot resist uh, wine beyond control, stop drinking. Leave it for those who have self-control. Praise God. Jesus was not a joy killer. He was not a, a straight-faced, uh, serious, religious uh, person going everywhere, prescribing fasting and prayer for people. He was even so liberal that John the Baptist disciples and disciples of the Pharisees came to him and said, what is wrong? They approached his disciples. Not only on just the vibe. Every time on the vibe. Not only they fast. He said, we are fasting. Disciples of John the Baptist are fasting. Disciples of the Pharisees are fasting. Why are your own not fasting? What did Jesus say to them? He said, the attendants cannot fast when the bridegroom is what? He's still with them. He was not this strict-faced religious man going up and down, just prescribing prayers. Say, hey, you will see choir. What have people doing? Like, Shh. All of you should go and see 100 decades of the rosary with some. What is the longest psalm in the Bible? Go and recite and all of that. That's the image of, no, Jesus was a jolly good fellow. He enjoyed life. Life is for the living. Don't enjoy here. Many of the things we enjoy here, you cannot see them in heaven. Uh, the things we enjoy, you know, when we die and we go to heaven, we shall be like angels. Uh -huh. So God gave us those things here to do what? Enjoy. Number two, the miracle happened at a marriage in a home. God is domestic. It was not in church. It was not in a crusade. Profound. It was not in a crusade. 95% of Jesus' miracles did not happen in a church environment. Praise God. It was either on the streets or in a house. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't forget that God is everywhere. And God can manifest himself anywhere. All it takes is Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Whatever two of you ask here, it shall be given. Or whatever two of you agree on earth shall be what? Agreed in heaven. Then he said, wherever two or three gather I am what? Wherever. 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 So, don't reduce the manifestation of God's glory to only when we gather like these crusades, revival centers, and all of that. There is a difference between what is trending and what is the truth. Crusades, revivals, they are trending. They are trends. They may pass away. We don't know what the next generation after us will do. But what is the truth that remains? That God manifests himself. It must not be in a crusade ground. So I must not go to crusade to receive God's miracle. Hello? Are you following me? Yes, I must go to a crusade ground to receive God's miracle. So if it is not convenient for me, I'm, me and now, you don't need to abduct me. If it's not convenient for me, I know they go. I will calculate it first. Why should I leave God here in the comfort of my church, my home, and begin to go through the perilous journey of uh, how many hours to another place? Mac again. I know. If it is not convenient for me, I will not go. And some go under very strict inconveniences. Some go, they don't even come back normal. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It is a trend. It is not the truth. If God is everywhere, then God can manifest himself anywhere. And the secret is Matthew 18, 19. He says, wherever, wherever, 
two of you or three gather in my name. I am there. So it was in a wedding. It wasn't a hyper, a hyped um, uh, crusade or revival. I, have, I, don't have much, I don't have any problem with those ones. I'm just letting you know that God is everywhere. And rediscover your home as church. I think the church has taught us that rediscover your home as church. Don't neglect the church in your home. I mean, don't neglect the God in your home and you're looking for him thousands of kilometers elsewhere. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, finally, let's look at the story again. It said the mother of Jesus was there. It didn't say the mother of the bridegroom or the bride, but the mother of Jesus. And she noticed that they have run out of wine. What did she do? She went to Jesus. In your life, in your life, for God's glory to be made manifest, there are certain people you must be lucky. You should pray. You should work hard to have in your life. Number one are the intercessors. Everybody say intercessors. Everybody say intercessors. Here, Mary is the intercessor or the solicitor or the advocate. She is not the mother of the bride or the groom, though analysis, extra biblical analysis, are saying she may be related one way or the other to them. But the fact remains that it is not her sole responsibility. She's not the only one who was close to them. But she is the only person who was so present in their life to notice when something went wrong and went out of her way to do something about it. That is a, that's an intercessor or an advocate or a solicitor. Somebody who is so present in your life to notice when some things go wrong and then does something to do what? To remedy it. Did you notice that Mary did not go to tell the bride and the bridegroom that wine don't finish you? Imagine if she had gone to tell them what would have been their situation. They would have been panicky. Abby, they begin to feel this thing. So your intercessor is not the one who sees problems for you in dreams or visions and comes and tells you and no solution. That's not your intercessor. Your intercessor is the one who sees problems anywhere you want to see the problem, whether it's through dream or vision or whatever, and does what? And tackles that problem without you even knowing. Do you know those couples did not know? Today's prophet, all they did is to see your problems. Some of you were having peace until some prophets started revelations for you. How can somebody spend three, five dry days making fasting on your head only to come and now tell you what your problem is and there is no solution? Are you following me? Huh? <laughs> yes, I'm scattering the rubbish notions you have accumulated over the years. A single lady is not married. And all your prophets will do is after praying for three days or one week, is to now tell you who is responsible or why you are not married. And normally there are t- templates already. It's either your auntie or your uncle or spiritual husband. They give you um, uh, how do I even put it? Pythagoras theorem of why things are wrong in your life, but they don't solve it. I don't know whether you are following me. Or they will now come and prescribe prayers for you. <laughs> I don't understand, do I don't understand. They will now come and prescribe prayers for you. That's not what Mary did. See, Mary, she's the intercessor. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. The Bible says, by a prophet... God brought Israel out of what? Egypt. That's Moses. In Exodus 3.10, God said to Moses, you will go and face Pharaoh. God did not tell Moses, go and tell my people Israel why they are suffering. God did not tell Moses, go and prescribe prayers and things they will do. God said to Moses, you will go and do what? Face Pharaoh. Your intercessor is the person who faces Pharaoh on your behalf, even when you do not know. Did Moses prescribe prayers to the people of Israel? Eh? Did they succeed? Eh? 
Praise God. Praise God. What did Moses do? He fought the affair. So if you have a prophet in your life who only tells you the problem, then prescribes what you must do, which you have to go and do. Not be prophet you get. What you have is profit. Praise God. And I'm very serious about it. Moses fought their battles. Even with all their strongest, sometimes they are even going and they will get us. We know they go again. We want to go back to Egypt. Moses has to go and meet God. I beg, let's do something again to show them and carry them. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Elijah. No, Elijah and the Shunammite woman, the woman of, the, uh, woman of Shunem. She's been accommodating him. Then one day, Elisha said to his servant, what shall we even do for this woman? Let's make inquiries. She doesn't have a son. It's not the woman that told him. What did he do? He prayed. But this time next day, you shall have a son. Next day, she had a son. Baba, Baba, the child died. The woman went to Elijah. She had my own. I know beg you. You can't carry him. Now he don't die. The fish saying, I may be witch. I don't kill him. He better make I did. That made they say I be witch. Elijah said, Elijah say, don't worry. He took the child, prayed, gave her. Did he give her any theory why she had not given birth all this why? Ancestors not exist that time, I be. Witches and wizards not exist that time, I be. <laughs> oh, God of Moses. Tell me, let me tell you on but for this church, you must get sense. You must get sense. You must get sense in this church. If you don't want to get them, please come and donate your brain and walk away with empty head. He didn't. Intercessors don't tell you what the problem is. They solve it spiritually. If God reveals to you, he will tell you what to do. Don't be seeing things and be telling people and putting their life under confusion. Somebody loses the husband, and all you can do is to tell her why it is the uncles or this, this, that. So what she should do now? You have not resurrected the husband. You have the power to see what happens, and then nobody can see. Computer cannot see. But you don't have the power to do the right thing. The most important thing that woman needs is either the husband resurrects or she goes over it. Why are you making her life now full of fear? And you, you will not... Zukwanike, Zukwanike. In Igbo language, Rest. Stop jumping up and down, hearing, here. Hearing. Why I'm saying this with passion is that I have real life stories of families and marriages that are in shambles because of useless prophets and visionaries. And probably I'm talking to some of you here. People you are not afraid of before, now you are afraid of them. People you never hated before, now you have hated them. People you were not scared before, now you are scared of them because of the things you heard. You are not living on eggshell. No life. I have come that they may have life. I have life, you don't have life. Praise God. That's, a, that's not an intercessor. That is not a solicitor. That's not a spiritual advocate. Luke 7, when Jesus met the widow that they were going to bury her son, her only son. She had lost her husband. Now lost her only son. Tragedy. When Jesus met them on the way, Jesus did not tell her or give her the spiritual reasons why she lost her husband or her only son. What did Jesus do? He did what he could do. He resurrected the child. Luke 22, 32, he said to Simon, Simon, Simon! He said, the devil has sought to sift you like a chaff, but I have prayed for you so that when you are strengthened, you will not strengthen your brothers. He didn't say to Peter, Peter, while I was sleeping, I saw the devil, oh, they were mighty devils, so oh. one was short, the other one was slim, one was fat, and they were coming from north, east, west, and south. Peter, they are coming after you, your anointing will finish, you better pray, oh. start fasting now, oh. blah, 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 blah. They are from your village, actually, the other one was looking like your uncle, you know, he doesn't like you since you left his shaman and started following this Jesus and all of that, blah, 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 blah. He said, I have prayed for you. Praise God. I am just imagining if the woman at Samaria, John chapter 4, then Martha, 
Martha and Mary. I'm just imagining if they lived in this generation. Do you know how many grand theories of what is behind their problems that they would have heard by now? This is a marital woman Jesus met. She had never married. Her problem was marriage. Even keeping relationship was a problem. Did Jesus give her a husband? Eh? Did he? No. If you, are in, if you are an intercessor here, or a prophet, if you see problem that somebody is going through, or somebody brings a problem, go and pray. After prayer, if it doesn't change, be humble enough and tell the person, I have prayed sincerely. It depends on God. If he will do something, he will. If he does not want to do, let his will be done. Because some after prayer, they are too ashamed to tell you that this is how it is, then they will not begin to look for explanation to postpone it, how you must be doing this or that, so that it will look like they know the real reason why nothing has happened. <coughs> um, it is I know the spirit now for saying that them don't come. <laughs> but I know why I'm coming, don't worry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Oh. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? So whether you are an intercessor or you're aspiring to be, those who stand in the gap are those who, like Mary, they are usually selfless. They watch to see where things are going wrong, and they go to fix it. Those are intercessors. The first reading says, About Zion I will not be silent. About Jerusalem I will not keep silent. Until her vindication shines forth like brightness. This is a prophet speaking about Zion. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to keep praying, interceding for Zion until she is vindicated. Jonathan was David's intercessor and solicitor. He stood between David and the father. If not for him, uh, Saul would have eliminated David long ago. That's an intercessor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This year I pray for you. May you meet intercessors in your life. Amen. Or may those in your life become intercessors in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You need them. People who stand in the gap for you. They can be in your office and they are discussing about promotion and you are not there. But for some reason, they want to knock your name off. And they say, no, this person qualifies. And because of that simple intervention, your name is put there. You're an intercessor. Oh, a husband is an intercessor. I think I've used this one here before. Because intercessors are not necessarily people who tell you what is wrong with you. They are people who do something about it. If your wife does not have sense of dressing, which some women do not have, Abby, mm. she will dress and look like uh, the second wife of Amadio. <laughs> As a husband, if you are in the house and she is coming, don't freak out. <laughs> No insult, you will kill her. She's already, I mean, somebody who dresses like the second wife of Amadio, and she's already dead now. Why are you coming to add this thing? Hey, where are you going to? Look at the way you are dressed like a mouse square. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Be an intercessor. When you see her coming out and you could jad like this, hold yourself. Say, hey, sweetie, where are you going to? Hey, I'm going for August meeting. Say, oh, oh, you are looking very nice. But come, 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 come. Let's make you more perfect. She's wearing red hair tie. She's wearing a blue blouse, green wrapper, and a purple shoe. That is color terrorism, Abby. It's not color riot. Hey, honey, no, come, let's make you look better. And you begin to change those things one after the other. That's an intercessor. Intercessors stand in the gap, whether you're a teacher, a wife, a husband, a parish priest. That's an intercessor. They stand in the gap. They make things okay. Praise God. Amen. Finally, you need facilitators. 
who are facilitators. Facilitators are those <clears throat> who follow instructions to make the miracle complete. Who are the facilitators in this miracle? The servants. Do whatever tells you. Because if you are not doing, things will go back. They feed the jar, draw it out. You need facilitators. Those who help you. Those who help, who listen to the voice of God. God wants to make somebody a billionaire, but the person needs someone to facilitate it. Either invest into the person's skill, or give the person the seed money, or bring the person to an opportunity where the person can express himself. Those are facilitators. May you meet facilitators in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you be a facilitator in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, above all, no miracle happens with only one person's contribution. There are many players and contributors. That's what the second reading is talking about. Second reading, this is where I end. I don't know whether I've talked too much. Second reading says, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of walking, but it's the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The chief celebrant mentioned it at the beginning of the Mass. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same one Spirit, to another the working of miracles. So in other words, in our lives, for the interventions of God, the miracles of God, it is not one person. There are different people that God has put in one way or the other that have played one role. So be wise to notice that everybody God has put in your life, the person has something he or she is what? Contributing. If the person is contributing something, don't underrate it. Don't minimize it. I usually use this. There are some miracles in your life that happen. Maybe you have been praying for years. Some people have been praying for you, fasting with you, where you were before. Then you now came to this parish. Then after one program, you, you became pregnant or you saw breakthrough. The tendency is that you will now go, hey, Father Lama prayed. And what I've been looking for years, God did it for me. Shut up. Just shut up. Probably God has been taking his time, listening to those prayers that have been building up. Praise God. Do you understand? Don't neglect those people who prayed with you when nothing happened. Do not. In the church here, yeah, don't neglect the church wardens. That is a gift. The tendency is that we exhort certain people, bring certain people down. See the church wardens, see the security men. They are, whatever they are doing is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't neglect them. It means that all of us here yeah, will have something to contribute don't feel a consequential. Do that little bit you have. Little drops of water do what? I pray for you today. May the Lord be present in your life. May the Lord be present in your family. May the Lord be present in your marriage. May the Lord be present in your relationship. And when you lack everything you need for joy, may the Lord bring change in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is needed for joy and happiness in your life, may the Lord continue to multiply in the name of Jesus Christ. May God never abandon you or let you be put to shame. But in every time and at every point in your life, may the Lord be there as the changer and the provider through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of... Eternal Father... For the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Amen.